has been three days since I've set foot into these God's forsaken woods, and I had lost my way already twice. Easy job, they said. Search for the man who wandered through these groves and find out what happened to him. What or whatever he was carrying. I needed coin, so that was one hard to pass deal. Old village drunks kept calling this place the Whispering Forest, telling a muck deep load of nonsense. Folk go missing, all kinds of strange things happening in these woods. No one believes these tall tales, of course. And I didn't pay heed to them, either. I'm used to trust my senses. Helped me to stay alive this far. But after seeing what I have seen out here, I am not so sure. Having found the one I was looking for, or what is left of him, I begin to wonder if venturing on this quest alone was a good idea. Forge. A vast outdoors, uncharted wilderness and dark, deep forests are probably the most common places. Except for the dungeons, of course, for the tabletop adventures and encounters to happen in. Building terrain in this theme, you can easily let your imagination to run wild, taking inspiration just by walking through the nearby forest, or if you aren't able to from the countless sources online. And this way you get to create your own unique pieces of terrain, as complex or as simple as you would like. In this and the following episodes I will show you how I crafted out of basically nothing my own forest terrain, and some additional elements that I can use in assembling different kinds of encounters, and not only in the forest theme. So let's build a forest. Everything began with making the base for the tiles. The cut at the top is actually where the ancient shrine was born. I chose the same thick craft cardboard as foundation for the future terrain and freehanded three tiles, different in both sizes and shapes. Cutting such forms is better with scissors than a blade, so that was the way to go. I ended up with bases slightly bigger than I drew on initially, but that's ok. Best part of this hobby is that you are free to go wherever your imagination leads you. As for the cardboard cutoffs, I suggest keeping the biggest scraps. They will be handy when you decide to create something smaller, like a miniature door. To the box of XPS foam scraps we go. Being a hoarder, I even keep them slightly separated based on the size. What I needed were the large square chunks that I could carve the rocks out of. I believe it's important to let go sometimes and let your hands guide you for a while. Imitating the random shaped natural rock formations, it only helps to make each of them unique. Once the rocks were ready, I began to gouge their future relative spots on the tiles. The thing is, already at that point I had an idea of the theme for each of the terrain tile, so the ground had to be shaped in the right way. 
Since using PVA glue right now on the clean cardboard could begin to warp it, I resorted to hot glue instead. It's fast and easy, even though it leaves a lot of wisps. Once all of the chosen rocks were secured, I textured them by pushing in the wire brush. This creates the aged texture on the foam, making the future stones look more natural. Now to the ground. I decided to use something different here. The wood putty used primarily in parquet floor renovations. This ready-to-use paste is smooth and easy to work with. And perhaps the biggest challenge is to not keep it around when you prepare yourself a Nutella sandwich and make a terrible mistake. Anyway, to create the ground texture, I tried to mix the putty with the fine modeling rocks and sands, the ones you can find in the railroad stores. But anything will do, really. After all, this is only the first layer of the ground. Having tried to apply the resultant mix with the same popsicle stick, I quickly found out that using a large, cheap brush is much easier and gives more application control. Some of XPS foam rocks were covered with paste completely as I wanted them to resemble the earth itself, not the standalone boulders. Then I also tried covering the wet putty with rocks and sands after it was already applied to the tile. Now I can say this method is much easier as you don't have to deal with rocks sticking to the inside of your brush that much. The wood putty actually comes in different colors, but I was lucky enough to find the one with the brown tone. The thin layers of the putty dry in a couple of hours, so once that happened, I got to cover the undersides of the tiles with Mod Podge and black paint mixed together. It acts as the primer and seals the cardboard, making it stronger. Then I did the same for the boulders and rock formations that were not covered in putty before. Also, didn't forget about the edges of the cardboard, they have to get sealed too. It was time to paint the ground. I chose the mix of dark brown and red acrylic craft paints. that created a rich dark crimson base layer on the tiles. Then I added some green and yellow tones at odd places of the earth to make it more interesting. For the rocks, as usual, I did a dark grey base coat, 
followed by the dry brushing with lighter grey tone. When those coats dried, I applied a little bit of citadel washes to resemble the mold built and green at lower parts of the rocks. And Agrax Earthshade across the major surfaces of the stones, making the texture look deep and rich in color. They have some Martian feel to them at this point, don't they? This wouldn't be the forest terrain without some fallen leaves, dried grass and general foliage on the ground, so I took a really handy and cheap material. Green tea out of the tea bags. It has the perfect scale and color for nature scenery, so I highly recommend for you to try it. Having watered down PVA glue applied to the sections of the tiles, I began to sprinkle the green tea over the glue. For a little variety, I also added a bit of sand here and there, mainly at the places where earth and grass were supposedly stepped on and crumpled the most, like this pathway between the rocks. At this point, I had most of the future elements of this terrain planned ahead, like the campsite, the broken cart or the trees. If you're curious to look behind the scenes and get a sneak peek on the future projects, check the link down below and consider supporting my work on Patreon. That is where I post the ideas, techniques and footage of terrain before they are released in the video. For a couple of bucks a month, you get the chance to view episodes like this a couple of days early and, most importantly, help me and The Forge bring better and bigger projects for the tabletop community. When I got to the campsite tile, I took the modeling foliage of the brighter yellow tone to cover the central area around the supposed campfire. Using the different combinations of all these materials allows you to create your own unique look of the nature scenery. The rocks felt a bit dark with the foliage around them, so I dry brushed a little of beige stones at the highest points of the texture. Still, you could say that the ground looked quite generic, so we must go deeper, in the natural material sense. Out of the tea herb set, I took three types, dried thyme, which looks like pine needles, chamomile for the dried grass, and grinded blackcurrant leaves. Using them to cover random spots of the ground helped to add a bit of interest and natural sense to the earth. For example, I added thyme, mostly where I planned to place pine trees later. And yellow chamomile reflected burned and dry grass around the campsite. I also added a bit of dried foliage at the sides of the road, because that makes sense. Finally, it was time to add the grass. Like before, I covered one section of the tile with watered down PVA and began working on adding static modeling grass using my handmade applicator. The point of all of this is that tiny nylon pieces of grass like this keep the static charge from the applicator and it allows them to stand up while glued to the surface when you hold one of the metal ends over them. 
I can guess that it's a much easier process if you use a professional applicator, but since I don't have one, I got to deal with some inconvenience when applying grass and have to resort to doing it manually at times. In the end it was easier to simply sprinkle the grass by hand in small amounts right over the glue and then use the applicator above it, getting those grass pieces to stand up. There were some tight nooks where I had to be more precise with getting the applicator to work, like with the grass between and at the bases of the rocks. It makes sense that the edge of the road would have fresher and younger grass trying to grow. So I needed to get a lighter green tone. To not leave it boringly green, I added some leftovers that fell down before, and a little bit of yellow foliage. And that is how it came out in the end. This is done using only the short 3mm grass, and later on to add a deeper forest feel, I continued with the taller versions of it, once I had completed the bases for the trees. It is difficult to fit everything about this build in one single video, so we will continue in the next episode. But hold on, if you're curious to see more, you've got to check the gallery of my work over Instagram and on my Facebook page. The links should be in the video description down below. That is where I post the current state of work footage on a regular basis, while my Patreon gets the shots of the future projects and sneak peeks behind the scenes. Thank you for watching, let me know what you think about this build in the comment section below. Don't forget to click subscribe and share this video with your friends, because as you know, it is dangerous to go alone, so perhaps they will be willing to accompany you on a journey through the gloomy and whispering depths of the forest. As I will see you in the next episode.